Hi, it's Azure Friday. I'm talking with Scott Guthrie, and we're going through each of the things in the Azure portal, each service that's available. First one here at the top is websites. Mm -hmm. And I run a lot of websites on Azure. I actually have 14 uh, running right now. Talk to me about websites. Well, Windows Azure websites um, basically provide a really easy way for you to host uh, web applications on Azure. Uh, and these can be UI-based apps, or they can basically be web APIs, or you know, pure programmatic ones. Mm -hmm. And what's nice about them is um, they allow you to deploy apps really fast. So you can literally deploy in Visual Studio in seconds. Uh, you can also deploy with Git. You can deploy with TFS. You can connect it up to GitHub or to TFS Online. Um, and um, uh, they provide a really nice management experience because you can sort of start literally for free. Um, we have a free tier. And then you can scale up to run across literally dozens of cores of compute across multiple servers. Um, literally in seconds. Mm -hmm. And so they're a really nice way that you can build and develop your apps, you can start deploying them. If your traffic goes way up, you can scale up as you need, and you can also then scale down if you don't need them anymore. And it provides built-in load balancer, uh, session, uh, layer seven, uh, sticky session support, mm -hmm. uh, and all the whole deployment nine yards, and, and provides a really great SLA. I, I use them more than virtual machines yep. myself, just because I don't want to think about managing an operating system or yep. running Windows Update? You don't have to patch them. We do the patching for you. Uh, we always have machines in hot standby, so if one of the servers you're running on has a problem, we can immediately start switching over traffic to a new one. And you know, I, I use uh, Windows Azure websites myself for all my web apps, including the image uh, gallery for my blog. And it's beautiful because I just upload the stuff, I turn it on, I don't think about it, and you know, I uh, you can even set it up so it'll it'll send you an email anytime your site is down yeah. or a request takes more than a certain amount of seconds. And is it really Windows and really IIS? Under the covers, yeah, it's actually running IIS and Windows, and then we use what's called ARR, which is the Application Request Router mm -hmm. uh, feature that's part of IIS. It's, an, it's a download extension, which is a, basically our uh, layer seven load balancer in front, and so we use that as well. Do I have control over that load balancer and how it behaves? You have, you have the ability to do some settings. Um, our goal is, to some extent, with websites is, is it just works. And so we, we try to be a little careful about mm. exposing too many knobs. Um, but you can absolutely put you know, in your web.config file all the IS settings that you'd like. You know, we let you pick, is it 64-bit or 32-bit processor? Oh, okay. uh, we let you upload SSL certs. So a lot of the other mechanisms you can definitely touch. Mm -hmm. um, but the goal is you, know, you don't actually need to you know, SSL terminate the load balancer, we do that for you. Um, so best practices are kind of like baked in? Best practices baked in, absolutely. Okay. Now you've got this uh, this one, this slide here, which is kind of interesting, and I wanted to show this because yeah. it gets a little technical. Yep. But explain to me what's going on here. So basically, in the portal, um, actually, let me sense, let's go to the portal real quick and just actually show creating a website. That'll make it a little bit real yeah, for people okay. that have never seen it. So I can just do like a, from a gallery, like I'll just do from gallery. Well, so let's just quick create a blank site, maybe. Okay, actually. I'll make a blank one then. Yeah. New, compute. Website, quick, quick create. create. Uh, Guthrie is here. Create site. And what you can see is when you're creating the site, creating sites are really quick with websites. I mean, typically it's about seven to 10 seconds. There yeah, you go. it's done. Um, it's done. And you can click into it now, and literally you have a website deployed on the internet. So I can actually probably hit it right now. You can hit it right now, and there's probably like a uh, coming soon page. Because when I made a virtual machine earlier, it took about four or five minutes. Yep. Yeah, because in this case here, we actually, with websites, have a pool of what we call uh, workers that are already running. Mm -hmm. And so we just allocate a virtual machine to you. And again, we can do that literally in seconds because it's already up and running. Right. Whereas with a new virtual machine, we have to create it from scratch. Mm -hmm. And what we get here is a nice dashboard that shows you CPU, bandwidth in, bandwidth out, HTTP errors, things like that. Um, if you want to, you can configure it. You click the Configure tab, and you can choose what version of .NET or PHP you want to be using. You can choose, is it 32-bit or 64-bit? Mm -hmm. You can upload SSL certs. You can map DNS names to it, um, uh, control SSL bindings, um, you know, tons of stuff here. Uh, you can turn on logging, where you want to log to. You can integrate yeah, new and, relic And now. I've done that, actually. If I go to one of my sites that's running live, mm -hmm. uh, you can see my traffic in the CPU. Yep. You can see people hitting it because they woke up yep. in the morning. You can actually see that no one's on it at night, Yep. and then suddenly, Monday morning. No, no errors. That's nice. Yeah, thank you. But here's a cool much. thing you don't have set up yet. What's that, sir? Click configure webpoint endpoint monitoring. Configure endpoint monitoring. And then I'll scroll down here. 
uh, in their, their real monitoring. Yeah. Type in a URL to one of the URLs on this thing. All right. So, like, my big one would be Hansel uh, minutes.com slash archive. Yep. And so then basically, let's call it archive, and then pick where you want to hit this from around the world. So yeah, pick Chicago, Chicago and Dublin, we'll yep. say. Great. And now hit save. Okay. What this is now going to do is periodically, it's now going to ping that URL mm -hmm. to see whether it's active. Now go back here into settings. So if you pull back out to the top level. Okay. And scroll down uh, on the left hand side, sorry, and click uh, uh, Management Services. Oh, wow. I've and never been in here. A, click a rule. We'll add a new rule. Add rule. And we'll say, Is archive up? Is archives up? Okay. And basically, choose website. Website. And you should see. Handsome minutes. Yep. Oh, wow, look at that. Okay, so then these response time, uptime. Yep. If uptime is less than or if. Let me say, if, if up, or actually, I would do this. Why don't you do availability here? So click that one, response time. Okay. And just say greater than three seconds. Okay. And Average over 15 yep. minutes. And then just oh, say wow. send me an email. Send me an email. Okay, that's cool. And then just hit OK because I guess it yep. knows my email already. And you can also supply an alternative email if you want to. And now, basically, it's now monitoring your website, and you'll get an email any time when it hit it. It took more than three seconds to respond, or if it returned a non-200 error, mm -hmm. or a non-200 response code. And um, yeah, it gives you, again, those are kind of some of the built-in features that it provides for best practices. Uh, and you can auto-scale and, and dynamically scale up and scale down your servers as well. Mm -hmm. um, and all that's built in, which is nice. Yeah. Under the covers, architecturally, the way this work, the service works, it's running on virtual machines, so it's using the same infrastructure that, that when you create a virtual machine explicitly in the portal, it's running on top of that same infrastructure. Okay. What's nice here, though, is we're running the virtual machines for you. Um, and we basically have a load balancing layer in front of them okay. of load balancers we manage, a deployment service so you can do FTP or web deploy or Git to deploy your apps. Mm -hmm. And then we basically have VMs running with IIS already pre-configured. And we have lots of them. And you can basically control on your website how many of them you want to use. Okay. And so if you're the developer here, use VS or an automation script, you can go ahead and deploy your app. So you use FTP again. You can use Web Deploy inside VS. You can use TFS or an automation server. And then once that deployment service then is effectively going to deploy your web app across some of those machines. And then when you have a browser come hit the server. So it hits that front end. It goes to the front end. It's going to hit one of these machines. If it sends lots of requests, the load balancers actually multiplex. And so they'll actually send the requests to all the machines your app's on. And they're smart, so they'll actually monitor the performance and response time of the web servers. Uh -huh. So they make sure that they evenly distribute out the traffic for new users. And they'll also do sticky sessions for users that have already touched one of the nodes. So by default, the user will always go back to the same machine. Mm -hmm. So that if you're using like session state, you can basically make sure your cache is actually always on that machine. So kind of load balancing best practices are, are baked in. All built in. The kind of stuff where I used to have to actually have the load balancer tech yep. 10 years ago come into yep. my data center and configure that for yeah. me. Or you know the stuff that, frankly, probably a well, blog post by you or me. Uh, yeah. And and you know here are the 25 steps to configure it. It just works out of the yeah, that that. Website we created just a little while ago had all these best practices built in. And then the cool thing then is, uh, I think you click again. Let's say if a server fails, the load uh. balancers will automatically pull it out of rotation. We'll spin up a new version that has your app on it and then add it back into rotation without you ever knowing. Uh, and so the beauty is that's also from a best practice perspective. You get hardware resiliency um, built in. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all wired into the load balancer, and away you go. Would I really never know? Is that is that the difference between one of my servers, like something that I, like my code failing versus something in Azure failing, like a fire that you talk, commented on? If a fire goes down, that machine disappears. Do I hear? Do I see in the operational logs that anything happened, or does it just I still have uptime? Like no, as no long hiccups. As, we don't, as long as we don't impact your SLA, there should be you should never know. So if a tree falls in the forest, no one's there. You have no idea. Um, and nice. so we'll, we'll periodically even cycle these machines mm -hmm. as we install like patches on them and things like that. Right. But the system is designed so that we don't actually have customer impact when we do it. Um, and you know, when you set up that rule just a little while ago that's checking the availability of your site, mm -hmm. 
you know, again, if this machine fails, the next request should go to one of these machines instead of this machine. And so your rule should not fire, even if that server went down, uh, because from an outside perspective... It never did. It never did. Ooh. Um, okay. And so the beauty is this is all built in. You know, when you install an SSL cert, the load balancers will automatically do the termination of the SSL so the endpoint. SSL terminates here. Correct. The SSL would terminate there. And so the beauty is, again, all that stuff is managed for you. When you want to install the cert, you just go to the portal and just upload the cert, attach it to the website, you're done. Yeah. There's no configuration, there's no copying, there's no private lockbox that you need to manage. It's all just built in. Very cool. All right, websites. Uh, it's Azure Friday. Thank mm -hmm. you.